Welcome back, everybody. Ready for another deep dive? Always ready to dive in. What are we exploring today? Well, get ready, because we're tackling a topic that never seems to get old. UFOs. UFOs, huh? Okay, I'm intrigued. Yeah, it's one of those things where I, everyone's got a story, a theory, or a, like a grainy photo they swear is proof. But before we you know, jump to conclusions about aliens and spaceships... Which we'll get to, right? Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> but first, let's ground ourselves a bit. We're digging into some excerpts from an article titled, get this, The Lights Over Fife, 1992. The Lights Over Fife sounds kind of ominous, doesn't it? I'm already hooked. Right. So just to be clear, we're talking about unidentified flying objects. That's the UFO part. Things in the sky that we can't immediately explain. And this article, it dives into a potential case, but it also tackles the whole UFO thing as like a global phenomenon. Global, huh? So not just Lights Over Fife, though. Definitely not. This is something people have been reporting, debating, honestly freaking out about for decades. I mean, think about it. These sightings, they've puzzled scientists, sparked government investigations. It's like this mystery that just won't quit. Yeah, it's not like governments are known for being super open about, well, anything, let alone unexplained phenomena. Yeah. It makes you wonder. Exactly. And that's what we're going to do today. Unpack some witness accounts, look at what science has to say, try to make sense of it all. You ready? Born ready. Hit me with your best UFO stories. Okay, well, one thing that jumped out to me from this article was who's doing the reporting. It's not just, like, everyday people glancing at the sky. We're talking about trained military pilots. Okay, that's a whole other level of credibility, potentially. Pilots know their stuff when it comes to the air. Exactly. They spend their lives identifying objects in the sky, right? Yeah. And even the reporting things they can't explain. There's this one account from a retired military pilot who claims he encountered this massive triangular craft. Triangular. Not your typical flying saucer, then. Right. And get this. Moving at impossible speeds, making maneuvers that should be, like, physically impossible. And here's the kicker. His account. Corroborated by radar data. Whoa. Okay, now that's interesting. Radar confirmation adds a whole other layer to this. Totally. It really makes you question... How much can we actually trust what we see, mm -hmm. especially in those like high stress or just totally out of the ordinary situations? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Our brains are amazing, don't get me wrong, but they can also be tricked, influenced, especially when we're dealing with the unknown. We're hardwired to find patterns, explanations, even if it means filling in the blanks ourselves. So you're saying like if we're expecting to see something, we might actually see it, even if it's not really there. It's possible. Think about, for example, if someone told you to watch out for a red car, you'd probably start noticing red cars everywhere, right? Even if they were always there, you're primed to see them now. Same idea with UFOs. If you're looking for them, your brain might interpret any strange light or shape as confirmation. But hold on, there's got to be some scientific explanation for at least some of these sightings, right? What about misidentified objects and stuff? Oh, absolutely. The article talks about that, too. Tons of UFO sightings end up being totally explainable things. Aircraft, weather balloons, even, like, super bright stars or planets under the right conditions. It's amazing how easily our eyes can be tricked, especially in the air. I mean, just the other day, I swear I saw this massive glowing orb in the sky. <laughs> Turns out, just a drone reflecting the sunset had me going for it. See, I told you. Happens to the best of us. Yeah. But even with all that, there are still those cases that, well, they just don't fit neatly into those categories. That's where things get even more interesting. More interesting? How so? Well, our trusty article dives into the psychological side of things, too, and it's actually pretty relevant. One thing it brings up is mass hysteria. It's this phenomenon where a group of people, they all start experiencing the same anxieties maybe even physical symptoms, because of a perceived threat or danger, even if it's not real. Think about, like, historical instances of mass panic. Sometimes it starts with just a rumor or a misinterpretation, but the shared fear makes it spread like wildfire. So you're saying a group of people could all see a UFO yeah. that wasn't really there just because of, like, collective anxiety or expectation? It's not as far-fetched as it sounds. The article also talks about the power of belief and suggestion. Basically, if you believe in UFOs, you're more likely to interpret ambiguous information as evidence. Our brains are great at finding patterns and confirming our existing beliefs. Right, so it's not just about what we're seeing. It's about how we're seeing it, the lens we're looking through. Exactly, and there's even more to consider. While not as common, our perceptions can be influenced by hallucinations or even false memories, basically distorted or even completely made up recollections. 
It's actually kind of a trip when you think about how subjective our experiences can be. Whoa, it really makes you question everything you thought you knew about, well, reality, I guess. Right? <laughs> but hey, that's part of the fun of these deep dives, isn't it? Questioning everything, exploring the unknown. Speaking of unknown, we can't forget about the title that brought us here. The Lights Over Fife, 1992. Did the article ever actually explain what happened there? You know, it's funny. It kind of felt like the title was more of a hook to draw us into the bigger conversation about UFOs. But I mean, that itself is kind of telling, right? How so? Well, it shows how much these unexplained events capture our imaginations, even without concrete answers. Totally. It's like even with all the possible explanations, misidentified objects, psychology, all that, there are still those cases that just leave you going, what if? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And to me, that's the beauty of it all. There's still so much we don't know, especially yeah. when it comes to the vastness of space. Yeah, we can debunk some sightings, but others, they keep the mystery alive. And I think the key is to approach all this with a healthy dose of skepticism, but also with a sense of wonder. I love that. It's like that saying, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. Maybe someday we'll have all the answers, but until then, it's pretty awe-inspiring to think about all the possibilities out there. Who knows what's really zipping around up there?